Bonne soirée à tous et bienvenue à cette rencontre en ligne du Comité de délégation pour la Ville d'Ottawa. Welcome everyone to this online hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Ottawa. The Committee of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial tribunal who is appointed by City Council to make decisions on certain types of applications under the Planning Act, so most notably minor variances and consents. My name is Anne Tremblay, and I will be chairing this hearing uh, this evening. With me are my fellow panelists. So welcome to Ms. Kathleen Willis, Ms. Julia Markovich, Mr. Scott Hindle, and Mr. Colin White. Also, we could never make these things work without the uh, dedicated work of our coordinators. So we also have Ms. Mandy Nguyen with us this evening, Ms. Emily Monette, and Ms. Cheryl Williams with us this evening, as well as our Deputy Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Matthew Garnett. And we also have uh, city staff with us who always support us quite well, Mr. Uh, Hodgins, Ms. Ramirez, Ms. Young, who, uh, who are, uh, are they're the, the ones that help us an awful lot with information that's maybe not quite available. So. Uh, please note that this is a video conference. It is being uh, recorded. And if you do want to see it, you can both access the agenda for tonight as well as the video conference. If you just go to the city's website under the Committee of Adjustment, you'll be able to find that. And before we begin, I, you know, the Committee of Adjustment has a fairly narrow uh, jurisdiction at the end of the day. So things that we really can't talk about as part of these hearings is um, any aspect of, uh, of the proposal, which actually isn't part of the application. So we really can only speak to those elements that is specifically before the panel. So if there's, a, if there's something about the proposal that's actually in keeping with the zoning bylaw, we are, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the things for which we're looking for minor variances from the standards of the zoning bylaw. We also will not be talking about any noise pollution, property maintenance, property values, those are also outside of our jurisdiction, prosecution for illegal construction. We treat all applications as if nothing has happened. We want to entertain any personal comments about any agents, applicants, neighbors, anyone involved in these proceedings. And secondly, we, or lastly, I should say, um, we won't uh, hear an application if we find that additional variances or greater relief to a variance is required. In those cases, a, a recirculation of the application is, uh, is required. So as part of the statutory public notification requirements, each applicant is uh, expected to, to um, erect a sign our post assigned on the property to which the application applies, and then to file with us a statutory declaration uh, about that sign posting. We don't have any of those with us tonight, so I will be reading out um, what we call an affirmation or a solemn declaration that, in fact, the sign was posted as it is supposed to be posted under the requirements of the Planning Act. So uh, with respect to quorum, so we're all doing this online, we've all hit glitches, things happen. And when that happens, um, the, if there's a member who can't continue, then somebody will jump in. Um, in my case, it's either Mr. Mr. Hindle or anyone else who would like to jump in on my place if you lose me, which, is, which happens. <laughs> so, um, and if we lose quorum altogether, so say something happens and we can't reestablish quorum, uh, in that case, we will simply step down the applications that haven't been heard to the very next meeting of the committee. So, uh, also, you saw the agenda. It was posted on the uh, website at the start of the hearing. Uh, so those applications essentially appear in the order that they were submitted to committee staff. So we have a little bit of discretion in what we hear in the order that we hear those applications, and we will be doing that tonight. So what, before we actually hear these applications, you should know that the committee's had a chance to look at a, all of the background information that's available on the file and to have reviewed that and discussed anything that we think we uh, would like further information about. So we try and, and come up to speed on these applications to the extent that we can. Um, having said that, uh, we make no decisions before we get into this hearing environment. 
and we like to hear from anyone who has an interest in the application and certainly are welcoming or invite anyone to provide any new information if, uh, if that's appropriate. So what we start with typically is that we invite the applicant or the agent to come forward or the owner to come forward. And uh, sometimes we request a presentation, sometimes not. Tonight, we won't be asking for any presentations. Uh, and then we give the committee members a chance to ask some questions in order to really get clarification around the application. If there was something that, that came up or that we, uh, that we feel we need more information, we can ask questions at that point. Once we're done, we will open up to the, the public and, uh, and from that point, invite anyone who, and I, I do have speakers lists, so I do have very brief speakers list for tonight, but anybody can address the, the committee. So if during the course of the proceedings, you find that you, there is something that you wanna say and you haven't registered, that's fine. All you need to do is raise your hand and the coordinators will bring you in. And then at that point though, I will want your name and your address for the record. Once we've heard from everyone, the committee again might ask you some questions to get some clarification about your, uh, about your position or about your concerns. Once we've done all that, we will wrap up the public portion of the hearing and then the committee members will deliberate and then we have a chance to make a decision. So we either grant the application, we can refuse the application, Rarely, but it does happen. We reserve on the application if there's if there's a lot of new information that's been provided to us as part of the hearing process, and then we can adjourn the application. We do have a few few adjournments for this evening already. Once the uh, once all of that has happened, then the committee um, can make an oral decision, but you can be uh, assured that there is a formal decision that will then be issued to anyone who has an interest in the application 10 days within the, um, the time frame of the end of this hearing. Uh, if you do want to get a copy of that decision and you haven't registered, you can contact committee staff and they will provide it to you. And that official decision provides the reasoning for the committee's uh, either granting or refusal or what have you. All decisions of the committee are subject to a 20-day appeal period during which uh, time the decision can be appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal for a, for a fee. So with that, we can go to the items of business. I think the first thing is, is there anyone who has to declare an interest in, uh, in any of the items, either before us or before any of the other panels that heard applications today? Mr. Wright. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have to declare interest on uh, item number three on our agenda for the Sheffield Road property. Uh, periodically perform some uh, sub-consulting work for the agents on the, on the file. All right, thank you, Mr. White. For the record, we have noted that. All right, um, anyone else? No? Okay, we're gonna go to the minutes. We have two sets of minutes to approve for tonight. So I'd like somebody to move a motion to approve the minutes of April 7th. Ms. Willis, seconded by Ms. Markovich. We need to do the same for the minutes of April 21st. Do I have a mover? Mr. Hindle, seconded by Mr. White. All right, so the minutes are uh, approved. So we have a number of adjournments on file. And the first one that I'd like to call down at this point is number three, which is 2555 Sheffield. And I believe I'm looking for Mr. Price. Madam Chair, do you want me to uh, remove myself from the meeting for this discussion? I, I think we need to. So if the, uh, if the coordinator can simply uh, take you out, <laughs> and then bring it back when we're done on this adjournment uh, request. So, all right. Um, so is it Mr. Price or Mr. Leal? Because I'm seeing Mr. Leal's name come forward. Um, I believe, hold on. Uh, can you see me and hear me now? Yes, we can see you and we can hear you, Mr. Leal. So our understanding is that staff is requesting a... Um, an adjournment on the application for this evening for a number of reasons. So, and I think I, I'd like to hear from you 
and then we can talk about uh, when we might we might adjourn to. Is it Mr. Uh, Lille or Mr. Price who will be addressing? I, this? I will I will address this issue. I'm the lawyer. Uh, Rod is the uh, planner. I act for the uh, two applicants in this application. Uh, I spoke with Cameron Hodgins today. He and Sean Moore are the authors of the report requesting the adjournment. I told him I would not be consenting to an adjournment. I wanted the hearing to proceed this evening. All right, so Mr. Leal, there are a number of issues that were raised by staff with regards to the request for an adjournment. Not the least of which, by the way, is the, a change in the application today, I hear. So I'll be very honest with you, that's not something I had a chance to look at at all. And, and uh, probably other members of the committee as well, as a result of, uh, of that very last minute submission. I don't know if you've been before us before, Mr. Leal, but I can tell you that the committee generally doesn't appreciate to have these last minute submissions so that, so that we're essentially a little bit in the dark here. But there are other issues, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Hodgins to come forward if he can. Because in addition to that, I've got a little list here, um, lack of a survey uh, information um, for, for the file itself. Um, again, a revised requirement to a lot line adjustment. Uh, we don't have a revised staff report in any way for this. Um, prematurity, frontage issues. Mr. Hodgins, would you benefit from some more time? Because it, I can tell you that I think the committee members would. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, certainly, I think there's some issues uh, with going ahead as was previously proposed. And I think if, if there is a proposal to go with a lot line adjustment, I think we would need some more time. I think there's, there's still some concerns that need to be addressed there. And I think uh, overall, we'd like to have more information on if it's a lot line adjustment, the lots it's being added on to. Um, so yes, I would agree. We still are requesting an adjournment this time. All right, thank you, Mr. Hodgins. Mr. Garnett, can you come forward? Because it seems to me that there's enough of a change to the application that a recirculation might even be required as a result. Um, Madam Chair, uh, thank you for the question. We haven't received direction regarding parameters for mandatory recirculations for consent applications, but it would fall to the committee's dis discretion to determine whether the change is significant enough to warrant recirculation. All right, so we're going from proposal for a lot creation to a lot line adjustment. I'd like to hear from the panel members, if I could, please. Any thoughts about uh, recirculation? That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I, I think, Madam Chair, I, th I, I would tend to agree that if the, if the application is changing fundamentally, I would likely lean towards a recirculation in this case. Um, Obviously there's some issues, so at the very least an adjournment, but um, I would tend to lean towards a, a recirculation. All right, thank you, Mr. Hindal. Ms. Markovich, Ms. Willis. Um, Go ahead, please. I'm, I'm just, um, certainly an adjournment. I'm, I'm not clear on the, the differences between the um, that, that forms of application, whether it's a lot line adjustment or a consent to sever to understand the, um, the, the need to recirculate. Um, I, just, I just don't understand it. We only got the, the, the uh, letter today and it's not clear to me what the differences are between the two and whether or not they need a recirculation. It sounds like it's a complicated process. So I, I'm sort of at the... Um, I have to rely on somebody else's advice on this, whether it's staff or other lawyers in the room. I, I'm sorry, on Zoom, I just, um, I don't know. All right, thank you. Ms. Margaret, your thoughts, please? Uh, yeah, I think I would echo what um, Member Willis has just uh, articulated. I haven't seen the, the proposal, so it's a bit difficult at this point to determine about recirculation. And certainly the idea of an adjournment, I think is a good way forward. Um, yeah, and sort of take it from there. All right, thank you, Ms. Markovich. Mr. Garnett, can I, can I speak with you again? 
Uh, just a quick question. So if we were to adjourn this to the very next meeting, would it be possible to get an opinion from our legal folks to see whether or not, in their opinion, a recirculation is required? We could actually put this to an adjournment, but if, in fact, the opinion comes back from legal that we need to recirculate because fundamentally the application is considered to be um, sufficiently different than what was circulated, remember, our standards for recirculation on minor variances is really low. So... Um, so I'm a little bit worried that something like this, we're gonna let this go without recirculation. I, I wanna know, I'd, I'd like to hear from our legal people on that. So Mr. Garnett, what do you think? Uh, Madam Chair, I can certainly take that to uh, city legal, um, try and get an answer as soon as possible, hopefully by early next week um, in an advance of a uh, future hearing, if this All is right. just heard. All right, thank you, Mr. Garnett. So committee members then, where I think I'm leaning to just, Mr. Price, let me finish with the committee members and then I'll come back to you. So where I'm leaning to um, committee members is an adjournment to the June 2nd meeting with the caveat that we want uh, some um, confirmation from legal that in fact, we can hear the application as revised rather than a recirculation. Um, those, I, mean, I guess I'm looking for who would be in support of, of that. All right, okay, looks good. Mr. Price, go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna offer up <clears throat> just a quick opinion in terms of the intent and the Planning Act requirements, which would have been met in terms of, you know, adequate circulation, notification of the public, uh, by virtue of checking a different box on the application, I would, I, you know, I, I'll wait until what the city lawyers say, but I was gonna offer that, you know, all planning act requirements in terms of notification under the, the appropriate section have been met with, with, with no, no comments received from the public or, or anybody else. So, but I, I see where this is going. So I'm, that was it, thanks. All right, thank you, Mr. Price. We look forward to getting an opinion for our legal people. Mr. Leal, did you want to add? Well, I, I didn't, with the greatest of respect, I didn't really make a submission. I simply told you I didn't want to have a, an adjournment. So I, I would like the opportunity to direct this. The initial application that went in contained, uh, um, if I can just take a minute, this is a complicated process. Um, we are in the midst of negotiations with uh, the city of Ottawa to purchase uh, the road allowance, which will give us a contiguous parcel, which would allow this to be a lot line adjustment. The reason we submitted this issue today is because the lot line adjustment answers all of the substantive points raised by Cameron Hodgins in his report. It eliminates his concern about a landlocked parcel, which doesn't have a frontage on a road. Uh, it becomes a simple lot line adjustment. So, and, and it was not our intention to, to um, overly burden the committee with additional information. It is literally developing as we go along. Um, what I would like to see, I, I'm of the view clearly that an additional circulation is not required in the present circumstances. And um, our point is that a lot line adjustment really is a simple process. It's much simpler than the other. And we think we, we could have proceeded tonight simply because it is doing it as a lot line adjustment is not a complicated method. So uh, I informed uh, Cameron Hodgins of that today. Uh, Mr. Hodgins did not have an opportunity to, to review that in detail. Um, I don't know what his position is on what I'm saying, but I, I do feel that changing this, we're doing this simply to alleviate the committee's concerns. And All right, the thank concerns you, Mr. Liu. Expressed. Thank you, Mr. Liu. I think we heard from Mr. Hodgins right from the outset, though, that he would be more comfortable with an adjournment so that he has more time to consider it. And certainly from the committee's standpoint, the application that we reviewed up until you know, four o'clock today essentially is not the application that's now before us. So if you can appreciate, the committee tends to want to have a really straight sort of um, 
input from staff and the drawings need to be. So I think um, at this point, I'm gonna open it up to the public. Is there anyone in the audience who has an interest in this application that wants to speak either for or against an adjournment on the application? All right, I'm not seeing any hands. So I think then um, committee, here's what I'm gonna propose is that we adjourn the application to June 2nd with a request that as the application comes back that we have some confirmation from legal that a recirculation in this particular case is not necessary. Are we good? In favor? All right, okay. So for the record, the, uh, the committee has unanimously uh, um, granted an adjournment to June 2nd, and we'll look forward to seeing a gentleman back in two weeks. And, uh, and Mr. Hodgins, if you can please ensure that you have a revised report that will include legal's uh, position on this, that would be truly appreciated. And we'll go from there. Thank you very much for your time. All right, next agenda, our adjournment request that we have is for application number four. Uh, 25 Helena Street. I think I'm looking for Mr. Holtzman. Is that possible? Nope, maybe not. Hang on. No, oh, Mr. Froom. Sorry. From or Froom? Do you want to come forward? Hi there. Hello, how are you this evening? Very well, it's a warm one, but I'm glad to be here. Thank you for your time. Madam. <laughs> Actually, I'm loving it. So um, you're aware that uh, staff has requested an adjournment on this application because there's an issue with uh, the zoning standard that was quoted in the notice? Yes, I am. And to provide a little bit of additional context, um, we had made, made a mistake in our, in our application because we thought that the front, the setback required at the front of the property was six meters, which we also think is more desirable for the streetscape. So we designed our addition in accordance with that six meter setback, but it turns out that the front requirement is only three meters. We were not choosing to alter our design in any way, even though that would afford us to move the property further forward. But as a result, it means that the rear setback requirement is 30% as opposed to 28%, which is a difference of about half a meter in our case. Um, also notable is that uh, when our lot was created in, in 1919, it was a 100 foot lot. And in 1935, uh, the city built an underground storm sewer uh, in the last 15 feet of our backyard. So in the spirit of the bylaw, there is quite a bit of additional green space back there as a buffer um, because uh, that storm sewer was tunneled, I believe. And so that 15 feet is currently included in the use of our backyard. It's fenced within our backyard. So it does provide some additional buffer uh, sort of in the spirit of the bylaw. Um, so it was our error. It doesn't alter um, the request for relief in that we are still seeking a minor variance for a 25% uh, of the rear lot depth. Um, so my request respectfully to the committee was going to be uh, if they see the nature of, of that error as technical um, and because it doesn't alter the, the nature of relief sought, my request was going to be that it perhaps would be able to pass notwithstanding or noting that error. But uh, anyways, I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions for the applicant on this? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. So I guess we had a bit of a debate ourselves, Mr. Firm, about the technical nature of the, um, of the application. Um, Mr. White, I see that you're just coming back now. We're on the Helena uh, adjournment request and Mr. Firm has essentially submitted that it was a technical error, doesn't change the actual relief sought for the development and would like to proceed. So I guess I'm looking for input, either questions from the committee to Mr. Froome or input otherwise from committee members, anything? All right. Um, if we were to adjourn this, I think we heard from staff that the earliest we could get this application on would be the June 16th. I think that's what we said, right? June 16th. If I'm wrong, Mr. Is that right, Mr. Garnett? Uh, yes, it, it would be June 16th uh, if recirculation is required. 
Okay. And we, you know, we agree with you, Mr. Frum, to a certain extent, because normally the issue with relief is actually greater relief as a result of the development and not of the actual calculation on the base zoning bylaw standard. But I see Mr. White has uh, his hand up. So go ahead, please, Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question um, uh, in, on the adjournment. Are, is this in order to provide further public notice? I'm just wondering what's being what's being addressed, what's being accomplished here. This provides further public notice to uh, uh, with respect to the the error in the uh, uh, application of the bylaw number bylaw requirement. Yeah. So in the strictest sense, it is greater relief. Only not because the development uh, calculation in terms of what they need is wrong, but rather because of the base calculation on the zoning standard. So anytime, as you know, that we have um, greater relief, uh, and we've never really distinguished whether, you know, from where that greater relief, um, you know, whether or not there should be a distinction called between the a change in relief because it's driven by changes to the plans or whether it's you know, from just a calculation on the standard. We've never really called a distinction. We simply have moved forward with adjournments on these cases for recirculations, but I wanted some input from everyone on that before we go there. Uh, All right. Sorry, uh, another question, Madam Chair. Um, the, the form of the notification would would it be reposting of sign uh, mailing mailing uh, mail out to the uh, the standard radius all those all those things, Mr. Garnett. I'm going to get you to uh, because that's really your <laughs> staff's sort of work. Can you just confirm that for us? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so it would be essentially going through the public notification process again on the basis that the initial circulation wasn't adequate. So that would be the circulation um, of a written notice to all property owners within 60 meters, as well as the posting of a sign for the minimum period, roughly two weeks. Um, and there is a uh, recovery fee associated with that of $662. Uh, and sorry again, would... Uh... Uh, would that notice the subsequent notice be issued such that it would be you know clarifying or indicating that it's clarifying an issue with the, the previous notice? I'm just worried about you know confusion out there with with the public. Uh, so there's uh, two sections of our notices: a purpose section where that would be addressed, what's happened, and then a section of relief required where the amended variance would be reflected, if indeed a recirculation is. Thank All you. Right. So folks, I guess the at the end of the day is, you know, is, you know, are, are we serving the process that much? Like I'm trying to figure out what the value added is of going ahead with another circulation here. I don't, I think the public is quite aware of, of what the relief for the, the development is as a requirement. Will it really matter at the end of the day that there was a minor calculation error on the base standard for this, from the zoning bylaw perspective. And I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, yeah, Ms. Willis, please. I'm uh, very sympathetic to the applicant here. And I think that if we're, if somebody's seeking a variance to a, a dimension 2X, it's not, that's what, that's never changed. What has changed is it's the variance from Y minus two or something. And that's not really, I think what we approve. So when things go on circulation and the public sees what the final dimension is going to be, they can make a decision as to whether they can, they want to object to it or not. I don't believe there was any correspondence on this particular file. And so my feeling is if we have the authority to deal with this application tonight, we should deal with it tonight rather than put the applicant through hoops when I agree with, with the chair that there probably won't be any change in the um, in the outcome. And it's unfortunate that recirculation means it can't come to the next meeting. So um, if, if we have the authority, I say deal with it. If we don't have the authority, then our hands are tied. 
All right, so Ms. Willis, I I would agree with you on this. So I, if anyone on the committee want specifically to defer this, because if not, then I think we'll step it down and hear it. Any objections, Mr. I, Mr. Hindle? I think, Madam Chair, I think the the lawyer in me is technocratic and specific, so I would tend to say that the correct thing to be consistent with our previous approaches would be to defer. But if the rest of the committee is willing to move forward, then I'm, I'm happy to proceed. All right, Mr. Wright, wanna hear from you, please. Mr. Wright, one way or the other, are you in- I'm sorry, you... I, 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 I'm, I'm in agreement with Ms. Willis uh, and yourself, I think, Madam Chair, uh, I'd be prepared to deal with the application tonight as, as it is. All right, Ms. Markovich. Yes, I would agree, uh, Madam Chair. I'm willing to have this uh, stood down and heard tonight. All right. In that case, we're not adjourning. Mr. Farmer, we'll see you back once we uh, deal with all of the adjournments. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. All right. So the last adjournment that we have is application six and seven for Britannia Road. That's a consent and minor variance application. And I think I'm looking for who in this case? Ms. Shazade? Shazade, yes. Yes, hello. All right, so you're aware that there is a request for, um, for adjournment on uh, both applications? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we are aware and we did also uh, concur with the planning department's request for an adjournment uh, to June 2nd, if possible. All right. In that case, uh, committee members, any questions for either Ms. Shadiz, sorry, my apologies, or Mr. Chan? I do. I'll get it right. So, um, Ms. Willis, go ahead, please. I'm just, um, for coming back on June 2nd, is the applicant... Um, proposing to revise the plans to bring them in compliance with the zoning bylaw. Is that is that the approach you're taking? Yes, that is correct. With regard to the front the front facing garage requirement. Yes, okay. that is correct. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's some missing information too. If I recall from staff's report, there's uh, still a, a tree information report that's required, um, and I think staff. Uh, yes, the tree information report has been provided uh, earlier this week. All right, okay. So I think in the report that I read, might be me, um, it seemed that that still needs to review, be reviewed as well as the revised EIS, the environmental impact statement. So, okay, all right. So let's, let's um, I think then uh, if everyone's in agreement, we can go to uh, June 2nd, but before we get there, uh, need to hear from anyone in the audience who may have an interest in the application and wants to speak to the panel about this adjournment proposal. Is anyone out there that wants to come forward? Okay, not seeing any hands anywhere. So with that, then uh, all those in favor of an adjournment to June, to, yes, June 2nd. All right, okay, so that, um, that adjournment is for the record unanimous. Thank you very much, and we'll see you back in a couple of weeks. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that concludes our that concludes our adjournments. So we're going to start with uh, application number one, which is for twelve sixty two Woodside Drive. Looking for Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman, the owners, I believe. We can see you. Hi. Great, and we can hear you. That's perfect. That's great. That's all we need to proceed. All right, so we're not going to ask you for a presentation tonight. So I'm just going to open it right up to um, the committee members to ask any questions if they have any. Hey, Madam Chair, we require the oath, please. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we were just on the road. Thank you so, so much for that. 
My goodness. All right. I need to read this to you. And, and uh, I, I guess it's going to be Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman. So here, uh, so I'm going to read something to you and I need you to respond. So do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted on the subject property to which the application applies for this prescribed number of days uh, in accordance with the Planning Act and that it was clearly visible and legible for the entirety of that time? Do you either affirm or swear that to be true? Yes. Yes. You swear or you affirm for the record? We swear that it is true. Thank you. Okay, that's all I need. Perfect. All right, back to questions from uh, the committee. For any clarification, I think it's fairly straightforward application. No questions. Oh, Mr. Mr. Uh, White, go ahead, please. Just a quick one, Madam Chair. Uh, am I correct in uh, having a little bit of difficulty uh, reading the, sur the survey plan or the, the, uh, the plan? Am I correct in assuming that the existing building, the main part of the building is set back uh, at or in excess of the minimum setback requirement, which I think was six meters? That's right. And also uh, I noticed that there's a very substantial side yard on the one side. I'm assuming that's the driveway um, and parking parking space. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Is, is there any, is there any carport or structure over that? Or is that just an open? Just wide open. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. No problem. All right. Any other questions about the application? All right. I have no one on the docket to speak to this application, so I'm just going to open it up to uh, anyone in the audience who might have an interest. Now's your chance. You can just raise your hand and come forward, whether you're in support or in opposition. All right, I'm not seeing any hands come up on this, so um, we can go right to a vote. Committee members, all those in favor? All right, for the record, uh, the committee unanimously grants the application. So thank you very much and good luck with your project. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Okay, next application that we have on is number two, looking for, I guess it's 1326 Kilbourne. And I'm looking for Mr. Shindy. Come on up, come on forward. And uh, Ms. Ramirez, if you could come forward as well. So I'm seeing in your report that you had requested an adjournment on this. Is this correct? Did we miss this? Nope. All right. So it's not an adjournment. We're back on. Can you just give me a little bit of background, Ms. Ramirez, on that? Just uh, go ahead, please. Madam Chair, um, the applicant has submitted a revised tree information report, which shows some protection and mitigation measures for uh, the adjacently owned trees, as well as the city jointly owned city tree. And so staff is satisfied that the application can proceed and that um, further work uh, will be occurring at the building permit process. All right, thank you, Ms. Ramirez. In that case, we will proceed with hearing this application and um, I do need to read something to you, Mr. Shendi, and I'll need you to respond. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted on the subject pr property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days prior to the hearing and that the sign was at all times legible and clearly visible. Do you either swear or affirm that to be true? I swear this is true. All right, thank you very much. Hi there. Okay. So we're not going to request a, uh, a presentation from you. The committee, uh, as I said in the opening remarks, does have a chance to look at these applications in depth before we get here this evening. So I'm just gonna open it up to questions. Mm -hmm. Anything? Panel members, anything? Mr. White? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a question. Uh, I, I'm assuming that if we're predisposed to approving this, that we're gonna be tying it to uh, specific plans and uh, I mean, the elevation drawings, I guess, because of the 
the garage situation, um, the projection of the garage beyond the, the front of the building. Um, I'm just want to make sure that the applicant is comfortable with that uh, because the uh, in the staff report in particular it refers to the the acceptance of the uh, garage projection on the basis that uh, there's a balcony balcony projection at the front to over the over the proposed garages uh, seems to be quite, kind of uh, very important to the position that the staff is taking on this one. I just want to make sure that the applicant is aware that it's likely that we'll be tying a, a decision to, uh, to those specific plans. Excellent point, Mr. White. I think it needs to be tied to the plans for exactly that reason. Mr. Shendi, you, you understand what Mr. White has, uh, has outlined? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. Yes. Mr. Shendi, we're looking for some input from you, but you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. So if I understand this correct, uh, it's about to be tied to the uh, uh, primary projection and the second floor of the balcony in the uh, front yard. Absolutely, exactly. Yes, Any I, changes I, I, to your plans? No. Will well, they mean will that be. You're... Okay, all right. So, okay, thank you. Then that's good to know. Any other questions for Mr. Shandy? All right, I don't have anyone on the docket for this uh, application either. So is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against this application? Now's your chance. Just raise your hand, coordinators can bring you in. All right, I'm not seeing uh, anyone raise their hand. So um, members of the committee, all those in favor of granting the application? All right. So for the record, the application is granted unanimously and it is tied to Mr. White's point. It is tied strictly to the plans submitted. Thank you very much. I think we're, so uh, we're good. Okay, thanks and good luck with your project. Thank you. Right. Okay, we're going to uh, back to number four, 25 Helena. Mr. Froome, if you'd like to come back to speak with us. All right, I am going to need to read something to you as well. So I'll need you to respond. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted on the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days prior to the hearing and that the sign was clearly visible and legible for the entirety of that time? Do you either swear or affirm that to be true? I do. No, you have... Oh, I you swear. swear or affirm... yeah. I <laughs> Thank swear. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think we need to have that clarity. I know it's kind of a, a pain to, to make you have to choose, but um, yes. Now, before we get going, um, my understanding is we have a couple of housekeeping changes that we have to make then. So we are removing variance B as it's no longer required. So we're striking that from the application. And we are making the change that uh, to D, which is to permit a, a reduced rear yard setback of 6.478 meters or 25% of the lot depth, whereas the bylaw requires a rear yard setback of 7.773 meters or 30% of the lot depth. So Mr. Frum, do you accept those changes? Yes, absolutely. All right. Okay, no presentation required. Committee members, questions for Mr. Frum on this? Anyone? Mr. White. Madam Chair, just a question about the lot area. Um, I'm assuming this is a lot of record exists with the lot area that, uh, that, is, that we're dealing with. Um, and the only reason we need to deal with the lot area minor variance is because there is new development taking place on it. There's no, there's no question of, of legal non-conforming rights with respect to the lot area. Or maybe it's staff. Mr. Frum? Yeah, maybe, maybe this is a Ms. Ramirez? No, sorry, Ms. Uh, Cully, I believe, on this. Welcome, Ms. Cully. I think this is uh, your first meeting with us tonight, so uh, nice yeah, to meet you. you. Nice to meet you, too. So please, if you uh, wouldn't mind answering Mr. White's question about um, the, uh, the legal 
conformity of the, I guess you're tr trying to find out whether or not there's legal non-conformity rights to the, to the lot. The lot exists, Madam Chair, at uh, I guess 394 square meters. We are dealing with an application for a minor variance from that. The fact of the matter is that it's a lot of, lot of record that exists. I'm wondering why we need to deal with the lot area. Yeah, in our uh, notes, we did say that it was legal non-complying. We just said it was out of abundance of caution, which is what we were understanding it to be. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I, no harm, no foul. Yeah, Madam Chair, in my view, it's not necessary, but there's no harm, and I, I agree with you, there's no harm in us dealing with it. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Not seeing anyone else come forward. All right. So again, in terms of the um, the speakers list, uh, I don't have anyone uh, on or registered to speak to this item, but is there anyone in the audience who would like to come forward and speak either for or against this application? Okay, I'm not seeing uh, anyone. So with that then committee members, I think we can go to a vote. All those in favor of the application. All right, for the record, the application is granted unanimously. And, uh, and thank you very much then, Mr. Frank. Thank you very much. All right, have a good evening. All right, the next application is... Um, 85 Chippewa Avenue, and I believe we're looking for Mr. Holtzman this time. Mr. Holtzman. Uh, yes, uh, can you hear me, Madam Chair? I can hear you. I can hear you. Great. Uh, actually, Jonah Bond of our office is going to take over on this one, okay? And he's uh, he's ready to uh, jump in. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. It's yep. Mr. Bond, right? You. Yes. You. Okay. All right. I need to read something to you, and I'll need you to respond. So, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee? was posted on this, the property to which the application applies. Mr. Holtzman, if you could mute your, uh, your mic, that would be great. Um, secondly, that the sign was uh, posted for the prescribed number of days prior to the hearing, and that the sign was at all times clearly visible and legible. Do you either swear that to be true or do you affirm that to be true? I do so affirm that to be true. All right, thank you very much. No presentation required tonight. Opening up to committee members. Anyone for with any questions, Mr. Handel? Yeah, that's what I thought I saw in the um, correspondence in the from today that it sounds like the rear balcony uh, issue has been addressed. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I do believe believe that to be the case. There was um, some interpretation required and uh, that matter has been uh, resolved. Okay, great, thank you. All right, anyone else? Any other members of the panel questions on this application? All right, not saying, so I will go to the public portion of, uh, of hearing on this application. We do have two speakers who uh, have uh, registered, Ms. Jill Pratt and Ms. Nancy Wilson. So you can both uh, come forward if you'd like. I see you're there already, but if you'd like to put your videos on and your mics, uh, and then just let me know who would like to, to speak first. Oh. Okay. Is it Ms. My Pratt or Ms. Pratt. Wilson? Okay, here ah. we go. Yes, I'll go first. Hello, Madam Chair and committee members. Me and Nancy Wilson, uh, co-chair the City View Community Association. And we'd like to just provide some comments uh, uh, on this application tonight. The City View Community Association still maintains that these requested variances to facilitate the development of these two detached dwellings on undersized lots does not meet with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. 
The official plan's policies encourage infill intensification, but for the provisions of the zoning bylaw, our R1FF, zone 632, have not been updated to reflect the same intent. So we consider that de these variances are not minor. I also like to say that we did receive the comments from the city of Ottawa uh, this week, and we noted that there was some kind of um, issue with respect to the rail rear balcony. We don't know what that issue was, but they said that uh, they would require revisions or an additional variance would be required. Uh, the application, the way we saw it, we hadn't received any drawings and we didn't have any uh, elevated drawings to review either. I don't know why we don't get these drawings. We had um, a drawing of a front balcony on both both lots. Um, that was it, just a footprint of the front balcony. Um, so I just want to make sure that that was addressed. All right, thank you, Ms. Brown. The second thing I wanted to say was, um, the city notes that the SOT variances for lot width and area are consistent with the existing lot fabric of neighboring properties. Uh, the city said the Long Chippewa between Cordova and Bassano lot areas range between approximately 417 meters and lot widths range approximately 15.21 meters. I just wanted to say that I went out tonight and in fact, of the 18 houses that are on this block, there are only four that are on reduced 50 foot lots, thank God. The other 12 are all in compliance and some of them are on 65 foot lots and they're new builds and they look super. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pratt. Uh, we're gonna go to Ms. Wilson, if you would like to speak Ms. Wilson and then I'll open it up to the committee members for questions. Ms. Wilson, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, okay, we said this before, but this report also claims that the infill op optimizes the efficient use of service, service lands adjacent to existing infrastructure and transportation modes, and this site is well suited for intensification. The City View Community Association maintains that the infrastructure in City View still does not support this level of intensification. City View has no storm sewers. Um, most new builds in City View have filled the ditches and provided no piping under the extensive driveways. Uh, when two large houses replace a single home on a property, drainage is drast drastically affected. When the existing expanse of green space and trees that absorb stormwater is removed and replaced with houses that cover over a 45% of the property with two wide impermeable driveways, it is important that stormwater be directed into ditches and not to be surrounding uh, to the surrounding properties. In recent discussions with the City of Ottawa, we have advised that ditches and piping under driveways our requirement, we were um, advised that ditches and piping under the driveways are required, a requirement of construction. Therefore, this requirement should be noted in the conditions. The city must ensure that the ditches are included in the approval of any building permit and follow up to ensure that they are installed. This property currently has ditches and culverts under the driveway. This property is an, this property is an integral part of our stormwater drainage system. Um, also, we are unsure about the ability of our infrastructure to continue to service the extensive infills here. You might be interested to know that we attended a meeting with the city of the, on the new infrastructure master plan on May the 11th last week. Although this master plan is said to support the official plan, it will not be completed until June 2022. Following that, in January 2023, a bylaw will be passed to impose stormwater management for all construction. The city should be completing the infrastructure master plan in advance or at least at the same time as the official plan. Areas with drainage and infrastructure issues must be addressed before the doors open um, for even more extensive infilling. Um, the city notes that the subject property is within 600 meters of the baseline road transit corridor. Intensification of these locations increased increases transit ridership, making efficient use of existing infrastructure and curbs the need to extend infrastructure and provide municipal services to new suburbs. In fact, the City View Community Association would like to note that the Baseline Road has bus stops on it, just like many streets in Ottawa. Baseline Road Transit Corridor has not yet been constructed and may never be constructed, nor has it received any funding to proceed. 
If there is an eventual construction, transit in this area will be a mess for many years. If intensification is allowed within six meters, 600 meters of bus stops, our whole community would be included. Um, I have two other short points. The city tree information report notes, notes that one distinctive tree on site is proposed for removal um, as it is in poor health. It's an apple tree in the front. Um, the, and then there's two small apple trees in the back and a cedar hedge that will be retained. The cedar hedge belongs to the neighbors, um, but the two apple trees will be retained in the back. Um, we wanted to note that we got a picture um, with this file that shows a large tree on the front of the lot on one side, the opposite side of the apple tree. That's not in the tree report. And I think the reason it's not in the tree report is because there's a stump there now. Um, we're just wondering whatever happened to that tree. It was showing on Google Maps not very long ago. Um, and we'd also like to remind everyone that this property is on four lots of record. That is 25 foot widths. Because of this, because of the city's error in the collection of cash in lieu of parkland funds, there is no CIL collected on this property either. This brings our community total of infills with no parkland funds collected to 38 for another 19 we are unsure of, a total of 57. This accounts for hundreds of thousands of dollars for the city and our community. This money was desperately needed here for parkland. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and the committee. That's it. All right, thank you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you, Ms. Pratt. Quick question then for Ms. Young, if you would come forward, please, about that tree that Ms. Wilson uh, has noted. Was that something that was addressed in the tree information report? Through you, Madam Chair, no, it was not addressed in the aid and I've asked the forestry inspector to look into it, but uh, right now there's no history on it in the circulation system. So I don't know if it was um, a bylaw infraction or not at this stage. Find out, Mr. Mr. Bond. Then, are you aware of that? Did you? Uh, are do you know what happened to the tree? How long ago? Do you have any idea? Yes, I believe if you look on Google Street View, uh, maybe dating back to 2019, there may have been a tree on the site. Uh, that's well before we were engaged on the file. We were only engaged in 2021, so I cannot speak to. Um, what happened to the tree, whether there was an issue with it in terms of health or damage, but um, it's not on the tree uh, disclosure plan that has been prepared and submitted. All right, thank you. I think I think that's, yeah, Ms. Uh, Ms. Wilson's point. So Ms. Young, if, it, if I could ask you just to, to just um, pursue your investigations on that, just so that we get some idea of what happened on the property, just it won't affect doesn't affect this application necessarily, but it, it is good to, to uh, follow up on these things when we hear of them. So um, great, any questions from the committee? Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just wanna say that uh, Ms. Pratt and Ms. Wilson have made some excellent uh, points with respect to the overall issues with uh, with the city view area that have transpired over the last number of years. Um, I, I would, in particular, I want to, I want to question, I think I want to question staff on, on the uh, uh, provisions with respect to gray control and drainage and particularly as they relate to the uh, interface with the street, the street line. Uh, back in 1993, the former city prior to amalgamation in this area, uh, when it uh, was faced with infill development, not to the extent of the type of development that has been approved over the last seven or eight years, but but nonetheless some some infill development that uh, that featured uh, frontages and lot areas that were significantly larger than this, the city the former city required a very detailed site plan approval process for every type of development that took place in this community, and that site plan approval involved reviews of, of site plans, grade control and drainage plans, detailed drawings, uh, including elevations, specific information on culvert installations, materials that were used, inverts and ditches, all those things that uh, are necessary to address the kind of concerns that Ms. Pratt and Ms. Wilson have brought up with respect to the, 
the drainage problems in this in this community. My question would be to staff is what has uh, what has d transpired now in terms of that type of review of these these plans and these these new developments which are featuring uh, much more dense uh, dense development and uh, it seems like we are getting these problems with with uh, lack of culverts and 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 uh, drainage uh, proper drainage in uh, in the street. Um, the the former the former approach was included the taking of security deposits and inspections by specific inspections by city staff to make sure that these things were installed. Do my question to staff is, does the review and uh, inspection of development on lots like this include the inspection of culvert installations, certification that uh, culverts have been properly installed and in they meet city standards and, and all those things that would have been covered under the previous site plan agreement process that appears to have been abandoned by the new city, the amalgamated city. All right, so thank you, Mr. Wright. I, I am gonna ask Mr. Hodgins to, to respond, but before, uh, before we go there, I just wanna be mindful that um, some of what um, Ms. Wilson talked about, Ms. Pratt, is, uh, is sort of this idea of the infrastructure plan and the timing with the, uh, the official plan and making sure that all of these things are actually looked at to ensure that intensification can be supported. I think it'll be it'll be uh, on. I think the committee to follow up with um, with planning staff in general to make sure that that in some of these areas that we know are have issues that we get some answers. So understand how that's forming part of their whole infrastructure master planning um, exercise. But that said, your question, Mr. White, was very very narrow, very focused on whether or not the culverts form part of the overall review once the building permit is issued and development occurs, if I think I understood you. So Mr. Hodgins, can, do you have any insight with regards to that? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, given that this is a minor variance application at the building permit stage, there would be a grading and drainage plan required for both of the proposed dwellings. Uh, I can't speak to the requirement for a culvert. In this case, I, I do not know what the requirements are that would trigger that. I do know that as part of the inspections, the grading is inspected uh, in accordance with the approved plans. However, I won't be able to answer specifically the requirements for a provision of a culvert in this area. Thank you, Madam Chair, if I could, um, can I suggest that we maybe follow up on this, uh, this question? I, I think it's very important. It's, it's obviously been a concern in the community every, with every application that we deal with. And I think it's something that we need to get some clarity on in terms of uh, uh, what types of, of approvals and inspections, actual inspections by city staff are carried out uh, on these type of infill developments when they affect uh, when they affect the city road allowance and the, the drainage uh, situation in the in the neighborhood. So, Mr. White, I, I'm going to agree with you on that. I think it is important to understand more fully the scope of what falls into the um, the site investigations once the building permit is issued. So that's good information, and we can certainly ask Mr. Mr. Garnett, I think you, you've listened to this discussion. If you wouldn't mind just following up with whether or not that might form part of a, um, either either we ask for that information, get, get something back in writing, or we can always invite uh, Building Code Services as well to a committee of the whole meeting to, uh, to further explain to us exactly how that all works. So just make a note of it, please. And, and uh, the next time we put an agenda together, hopefully we'll, we can add that. Any other questions from the committee? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, I'm gonna just ask whether or not there's anyone else in the audience that's not on my list that would like to come forward and address the committee on this application. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone at this point. So um, I think we can go to a vote. Uh, I mean, we understand the comments that we've heard from Ms. Wilson, Ms. Pratt, those are all very valid as Mr. White um, has, uh, has supported. But we do need to get to a vote. All those in favor of the application? 
All right. So, Mr. White, you're dissenting. So we're, we're uh, so we've got four uh, members of the panel who are granting the application, which means, Mr. Bond, that it is passed. Uh, but we do have a dissent by Mr. White. So, um, and I think that is pretty much all we need to discuss with you on this. And uh, but thank you, Ms. Wilson, Ms. Pratt. You raised you raised great issues every time you come forward. Hopefully we can get some answers for you. Um, this, the culvert requirement's a new one on us. So we'll, uh, we'll see what we can find out for you. Uh, the, well, I can't promise you the next time, but uh, in due course. So thank you for, for participating this evening. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And Mr. Bond, thank you as well. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, we're going back to 2525 Lancaster Road, Mr. Chatter. Mr. Chatter is there, okay. Mr. Chatter, we did do the whole signed declaration thing with you the last time, correct? Okay, just so I don't forget that. Um, my understanding is that there has been a lot of headway made in this application over the course of the last few weeks. So do you wanna just catch us up? Certainly, uh, we have met with both Mr. Moore and Ms. Ramirez along with uh, Jeff Shillington from the city's engineering department. And we have uh, got an agreement with them on the plans that they want to uh, give us an approval on for the grading uh, around the new parking lot that was changed from the uh, swimming pool and the tennis courts. So they are just going to approve the plans that will apply to the lot that is being created for the existing building at 2525. And we won't do that till after the consent is finalized. So we'll just tie it to that newly created parcel. So we'll have approved drawings. Okay. Just before we go to questions from the committee, um, housekeeping items. So we are changing the notice because the notice now reads that the application is not subject to any other applications under the Planning Act. So just need your confirmation that we are going to be referencing now that the um, that the application is also subject to a site plan control application D D zero seven dash twelve dash twenty one dash zero zero sixty under the Planning Act. Sound right to you? Uh, so I was just checking 60, which one was 60 and which one was 61. So yes. <laughs> okay. We're doing a reciprocal, Excellent. we're doing the reciprocal consent here to make sure we had a clean title for both. Yeah, but what is the number, just to confirm, what's the number of your site plan application? Um, I have paid for it. I'm sorry, I've made the application, but with the city being closed, uh, I haven't gotten my number back from uh, the planning operations group yet. All right, so Ms. Ramirez, can you just come forward and confirm the number? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, that is the correct number, D07-12-21-0060. All right, thank you very much. There you have it, Mr. Chatter. There's, <laughs> that's you. the site plan uh, control <laughs> application number. Um, okay, any questions no. from Mr. Chatter on this? We had a lot of discussion previously on this application. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, I don't have anyone on uh, registered to speak on this application. Everyone I've got is actually they're, part of the application they're all my, team. Yeah, they're, they're all on my team, Ms. Madam Chair, yes, from what I can yeah. see. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna open it up. Anyone in the audience uh, want to speak either for or against this application? Your chance is now, just raise your hand and you can come forward. Okay, I am not seeing anyone come forward. So, um, Ms. Ramirez, there are no conditions to this consent application. You wanna just confirm that? Uh, Madam Chair, that is correct. There's no conditions of the application as well as the Okay, not even in an abundance of caution, a draining and a graded and draining plan or, it was really bizarre to me to, to be approving a, cons a consent application without any of those very, you know, typical conditions. But we're satisfied you're gonna catch them in, this, in the site plan control. Yes. 
All right. Um, to be quite blunt, Madam Chair, I can tell you that we have already completed the grading drainage plan and Mr. Shillington at the city has already reviewed it and he's satisfied with what, what's, what he's seen. <laughs> we just we just haven't had time to do the paperwork yet. So, Excellent, excellent. Okay, any last thoughts, comments, questions from the committee before we go to a vote? All right, all those in favor? All right, so Mr. Tatter, your hard work paid off. The, com the uh, committee is unanimous in, uh, in granting the application. So thank you for all of the work that you did. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of questions for you and, uh, and I think we're satisfied with the way that the application is, uh, has been resolved. So great, great work to you. Great work to Ms. Ramirez as well for, uh, yes. for having straightened this out for the committee. So thanks, uh, thanks, thanks very much this. and enjoy the rest thank of your evening. I will, thank you to the city staff for all their cooperation in this and uh, thank you for the committee for your indulgence with all of our back and forth. Perfect, no problem. Okay. That brings us to the end of our agenda. So I need a motion to adjourn. Ms. Willis and seconded by Ms. Markovich. <laughs> and with that, I'd just like to take a minute to thank, um, thank our staff, our committee staff, um, Ms. Um, Manette, uh, Ms. Williams, Ms. Nguyen for all your help, Mr. Garnett, and as well to our planners. Um, Mr. Hodgins, Ms. Ramirez, and again, oh, Ms. Young and uh, Ms. Cully. Kelly, um, did you want to come forward and just say hello to uh, to everyone? We didn't get a chance to really meet you before. Yeah, sure. Hello. <laughs> so Pleasure are, you, are you new with the city? Are you new with the city and you've been assigned to us? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions to ask uh, Ms. Kelly about her background or anything? At